Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Aaron Cohen, and this is another session in a series of sessions regarding management of controversial and incidental lesions. The discussion today will focus on management of curing. Dr. Mark Proctor from Children's Hospital in Boston and Dr. Cormac Maher from University of Michigan. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. We really look forward to listening to your very valuable discussion. And Cormac, please take it away. Thank you very much, Aaron. It's great to be back for another webinar in our series now of webinars on incidental findings. Uh, last webinar, we discussed uh, intracranial cysts, arachnoid cysts, and pineal cysts. And today, we're going to cover uh, the equally controversial topic of Chiari malformation and Searing. And we're very fortunate indeed today to be joined by Dr. Mark Proctor at Boston Children's Hospital, who's an expert in these lesions. Thanks, Cormac. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight, and I look forward to the discussion. I'd like to start out today by showing you a case, Mark, that uh, presented to our neurosurgery clinic uh, about one year ago. Uh, this is a young man who volunteered for a clinical study. Uh, and uh, had this MRI taken of his uh, brain and cervical spine. He was completely asymptomatic at the time and, again, was just simply volunteering for the study to make a little bit of extra cash on the side. Uh, because of the results of the study, he was sent to the neurosurgeon for an evaluation. What would you recommend for a gentleman like this? Well, I'd recommend he not volunteer for any more medical studies. Uh, that being said, I think it, it, this is a tough, a tough one because it sounds like clinically he's an asymptomatic patient. On the other hand, many folks might consider a high cervical syrinx that seems to be related to the Chiari malformation to be an imperative for surgery. So in general, in my practice, if I thought there was a syrinx, especially in this location and related to the Chiari, I'd probably recommend mm -hmm. surgery. And I think uh, the vast majority of, uh, of neurosurgeons would, would feel like you that uh, with a cervical spine syrinx uh, in association with the QI that they would be justified in operating. And, and uh, certainly that seems to have been the case. This, uh, this patient, however, refused to have surgery. And very interestingly, uh, six months later, returned for the follow-up MRI scan that he did agree to undergo, and it shows a nice resolution of his syrinx in that interval. And I certainly wouldn't suggest that this case is typical, I think far from it, but nevertheless, I think it is uh, illustrative of, of several of the issues that we face in dealing with Chiari uh, patients and patients with Chiari and the recommendations that we need to make for their management. Uh, although this is a, a very unique case, Chiari is often an incidental diagnosis. And we all know that they should be occasionally treated surgery, surgically. And I think for me, the difficulty is knowing exactly how occasionally that surgical treatment should be. The trouble is that there have been no large series describing clinical and radiographic characteristics of Chiari outside of our surgical series, and very few studies describing the natural history of Chiari. A lot of our reports are based on surgical case series, and a lot of what we know about Chiari is based on expert opinion, case reports, and these surgical series. Mark, I have another MRI scan here on the right side of the screen. This is uh, another patient uh, who presented with migraine headaches, uh, headaches lasting for hours, unilateral, uh, not associated with coughing, sneezing, and straining, and yet there clearly is a Chiari malformation. What would you recommend for this patient? I think it's very important. Important, Cormac, to align the symptoms with the findings. And, you know, as you say, we, we tend to see a lot of uh, children with incidental Chiari malformation. It certainly sounds in this case like the headaches are atypical for a Chiari, and I, I would recommend that they pursue a headache workup and treatment uh, outside of the Chiari before considering any surgical treatment. May, may I ask, what, it, what is considered a typical headache for Chiari? that defines it more of a Chiari headache than another kind of headache? I, I think most uh, most surgeons and authors would consider the typical Chiari headache to be a 
posterior cervical or occipital headache that's what's described as tussive in nature, so worse with 